afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our lunch hour service. I'm very glad to be here. I'm very glad to have everyone viewing in or listening or sitting or standing or wherever you are. We're very excited of, uh, about starting a new series, the Fruit of the Spirit series. It's looking at the Spirit as our co-pilot for the next, few, the next two months, going through all the different fruits of the Spirit. Let me open for us, and then we start our session from there. Father, thank you for your heart for this afternoon, Lord. Thank you that we can just be back here. Thank you that we can just come in front of you and in your presence in these next few minutes, Lord, where we can really just listen to your heart, where we really can just sit at your feet and just see and acknowledge the fruits in our lives, the fruit that you give us to use, the fruit that you, that you supply to us to nourish us and to strengthen us. And thank you, Father, that this session is in your hands and that your heart will speak to each and every person listening. Amen. All right, so our main text will be Galatians 5, 22 to 25. And we're specifically rolling out a series about this to see all the different kinds of fruit and standing still each and every week at one specific fruit. So I'm just going to read through the, the main text, and from there we're going to go into the first part that I will be um, talking about or discussing about today. The Galatians 5, 22 to 25, you can just page in your Bibles, grab your cell phone, just go to that. From 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So our heart is specifically to stand still and not just discuss the fruit, but to see the working of the fruit in our lives. And that we can see that we notice that fruit of the Spirit is not works of the Spirit, neither is it fruit of the flesh. And to, to make it practical, um, within, within my own life, I've started, I've always had this dream of a bonsai tree, to start a bonsai tree, to start growing one. And it's, it's quite a process. And shortly the uh, image will come up of the process that I've started with a small little camel thorn uh, bonsai tree. It's still very, very small. It still needs a lot of nurturing. It still needs a lot of work to get to the final product. But Looking into what we, we're working through with um, the topic that I'm going to handle today with, that we're going to discuss is the first fruit and the most important is love. Because within a bonsai tree as well, that I've, uh, the stories that I've seen, the things that I've read about, there's a lot of love that needs to go into that process, a lot of love that needs to go into that bonsai tree to make it get to the end product. And as you can see over here, I've got an end product and I've got the fruit. So later on we will be discussing what it takes to get to, to the end product. Just to read from here, the word works implies labor, strain and effort. Fruit doesn't, fruit doesn't come from the flesh because our old sin nature can only produce works. In Hebrews 9.14 says, dead works. So the works of the, of the spirit can only come from the spirit, not from us. Because we, as, as human beings, we've, we, are, we have a sinful nature. So we have to allow the fruits of the Spirit to guide us, the fruit of the Spirit to work inside of us. But the Spirit produces living fruit. This is in line with God's plan from the beginning of the world. Where God said in Genesis 1.11, if you can just turn to that in your Bibles, where God specifically says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And if we see here, this means apples will produce apples and oranges will produce oranges. So if we look at, at, at the fruit of the Spirit, meaning love, as the first one, what does love mean in a time that we are living in now? What is, what is love, if we take it back to when Jesus walked on the earth, when, he, when the fruits that went through him, inside him, walked out? And if we, if, if we are looking in the time now that we are standing in now, everyone is walking around with one of these. They either have it on like this and walking around because we must. And the challenge is for you to sometimes just remove this a little bit and smile to the person in front of you, to the person next to you, and then if you need to, put it on again. But that 
that is what we are missing at the moment. That is part of that, to sacrifice something from your side to give that love out. It's living fruit because it keeps on living through the lives of believers as they plant seeds in the world. Now, looking at, at this specific bonsai tree, it, it really takes a lot of nurturing. It takes a lot of love to make sure that this tree grows into the tree that you want it to be. It's not just a normal tree that you plant outside and then you water it and let it grow. Let it grow. And some, somewhere along the line, a few years going now forward, you see this big tree coming up. There's a difference. There's something else because you need to nurture it to stay in the position or to stay or to grow into the specific bonsai tree that you, that you want it to be. So that you, you'll need some wires to wrap around this, the stem, around the, the small branches. You'll need some pruning that needs to happen. And in the time that we are in now, we, we tend to keep everything for ourselves. And meaning love, what did Jesus do? Was, it, was the perfect love that he showed to the entire world. He sacrificed his own life for us. God sacrificed his own son for us. And that kind of love is exactly the kind of love that we should be able to hand out now. It's the kind of love Jesus has for you. He was willing to die for you, to die that you might have life, so that we might have life. Now, looking at our fruit, and specifically, we see a, a, a tree full of fruit, a tree that carries all this fruit. And then we, we, we as Christians, we as believers, hear that we should carry fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. And it's so amazing to hear all these things and love, and we carry this, this love. We, we are lovable people. But... When it gets real, when we are in a situation where we need to love, but it's very difficult to love, where people have trampled on us or people have done something towards us or life happens, how easy is it, is it to love then? How easy is it to love your neighbor then? And that's what God specifically says, which is the first fruit of the Spirit, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And to look into that, we can go into John 15 verse 5. We, and this, this has a lot to do with what LCB said and ended off last week, talking about the vine, talking about how we should be planted in to, into Jesus and how that tree grows, how the branches grow out, how you stand there. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me and in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So again, without Jesus, without we being entered in to, to, to Jesus, we can do nothing. The same with the Spirit. We, we are nothing without the Spirit. If we don't have the Spirit, we can't operate in those th fruits. The fruits will be non-existing. Looking at that, Jesus is the vine. Love flows inside the branches. And this love that flows inside the branches flows into the fruit. Love provides the nourishment to produce joy, peace, long-suffering, or patience, gentleness, goodness of faith, meekness, and temperance, or self-control. Now, those are all the, the fruits following through, but specifically love. The love flows through the branches into the fruit. And to look at this, it says in where it just says in verse 5 again, we have to abide in or stay with Christ. Now we have these fruits. What do we do with these fruits? What happens with this specific fruit to get to this. You need to use this. The fruit doesn't just hang on the tree for us to show off or for us to show that we've got, we've got, uh, I've got love, so I'm a lovable person, and that's great. That's not why we were created like that. That's not why the fruits were created. The fruits were created to give out. Do you, do you know the problem I have with offering up my body as a living sacrifice? We all have that question. Every time we get to an altar where we really have to offer our lives up or we re where we really need to put something down because th then it gets hot. It gets hot, we get uncomfortable, and we want to step away. But as soon as we start growing fruit, it's exactly the same principle. We want to tend to keep the fruit for ourselves because it looks nice, it tastes nice, but we want to keep it for ourselves and not give it out, not, be, not make it able for people to pick the fruit and feast on that fruit. That is exactly what Jesus did. The love that he had, he gave out to people, he gave out to the entire community and said, feast, feast on this love. And the moment they started feasting on that love, things started to change. Things started to change because when I give love, I would receive love. And then people will say, Franco, but not always. And you are correct. Sometimes it takes a lot more love 
giving love than receiving love. But we are not here to, be, to receive, we are here to give. That is exactly what the Spirit does. The fruit of the Spirit doesn't grow overnight. Every believer has the seed planted in their heart by the Holy Spirit. Again, by the Holy Spirit, not by who we are or what we do, not by any work that we do, we can receive the fruit. The fruit is only given by the Spirit. It has to be planted, weeded, and cultivated. It has to be watered, weeded, and fertilized. So there's a process. There's still this process to go through to get to that place of complete love. And in my personal life, I really want to get there. I really want to reach that place where I can just love everyone and just give out love. But it's difficult. It's Even in the time that we are, we are in now, everyone wants to blame someone about things that have gone wrong or things that are not working or anything that has disrupted you from where you were five months ago. And in this place, God still challenges us. God still asks of us to have the fruit of the spirit of love and to say, God, I will love. How can I love someone that is also going through the same things that I'm going through? How can I walk with this person and show them the love of God in the time that we are living in now? Let's turn to Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. It says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper." Let's look at, at this where he says, it says, and he shall be planted like a tree by the rivers of water. Planted, as else we talked about the where you are planted, we now, and the tree and the branches, and we, we are now looking at the fruit specifically. This love only grows where you are planted in the, right, in the correct place. Are you planted in the word? Are you planted in God's heart? Are you planted in seeking the spirit, in working for this fruit, getting to that fruit, putting in the time, putting in what is necessary to receive that love, that love fruit from the Spirit. And if we look at these trees, they are symbolic to believers. It would be a good idea to underline the words that bring forth His fruit in His season, looking at the season that God has developed for us, because this can only happen in a certain season. It's not all year round. There's a certain thing that happens. Yes, you can get it all year round on the shelves, but we don't really see the process that goes into this, the love that goes into this. And if we go back to Galatians 5, verse 22, and we look at the list of fruit, to begin, as we said, there is love, and we have already talked, talked about that specifically. What we didn't mention is that uh, agape love, that true love from God, that real love that doesn't determine or ask, are you worthy to be loved? Have you done what is necessary to receive love? You just receive love. God just gives that love out. And if we specifically look at this, God doesn't have love. He is love. And working through that in John 4, in John, 1 John 4 verse 8, if you can just turn to that in your Bibles as well. We can see there that God has love and knows love, and God is love. From the beginning, God is love. God is that, that, that love inside of you that grows. And each and every day, sometimes the, the difficult people to love is, is your family members or the people that you, that you work with daily because there is stuff happening. And the fruit of the Spirit, as we talked about, is something that develops. It's something that grows. It doesn't just happen overnight and you have it, you received it, and now you run with it. Each and every day you need to nurture that, that love. Each and every day you need to work towards that love to make sure you put down what you need to put down and pick up what you need to pick up. As we walk in the Spirit, God's unconditional love flows out of us. And that is where, that is, that is the main aim of today's message is to see what love flows out from, from your inside. What is inside flows outwards to the people around you. Are you showing love to the people around you? Are you showing love to your family? Are you showing love to strangers, to your neighbor? We find ourselves loving others regardless of whom or what they are. And then again, I want to get back to this. To, to see the fruit is easy. 
to pick the fruit is easy, to buy the fruit on the shelf is really easy. And you, you can see it and you know this is a banana and it tastes great and you can eat it. Exactly the same with this. There is a process that happens there. There's a lot of love that goes into each and every tree that produces each and every fruit that is in this bottle. And from here, I mean, this is a fruit of love, but you can't just keep it on the shelf. I don't know how it tastes right now. So the process is I need to open it up and I need to drink, I need to take some of it. That is exactly the same with the love that you have. You need to give it out. You need to source it out to the people around you. You need to show that love, even though it's sometimes very difficult. Even though you sometimes don't want to show that love, it's still necessary to step out and say, Holy Spirit, how do I stand in this place now? How do I love this person? How do I love this person that has hurt me? How do I love this company that is putting me in a difficult position, in a, in a difficult place right now? How do I love everything going on around me now, or still love myself with difficult mistakes or stupid mistakes that I've made, choices that I've made in, in the past? How do I still love in that place? And the only way that we can get to that is through Jesus and through the Spirit, through asking the Holy Spirit to really guide us in this process. And looking back to that and saying, God, I'm standing at this place. And I've also been in a few different situations where it was very difficult to love, where I just told God, but I don't want to love these people. I can't love them anymore. I can't show love to them because then it will affect me. Then I will look weak. And that is the, the place that I was the most wrong in my life ever. And God just started working with me and started guiding me through that process to show me, but to love in that place is actually where you show strength. Not your strength, but my strength in that situation. And just as this, this dream and idea of mine with this bonsai tree where I've just started with it, and um, with the, the photo you'll see the plant is very small still, there's this process of love that I need to put in to this bonsai tree to make it a bonsai tree. At the moment, it's just a small camel thorn tree looking like nothing, just a small little bush. But the process going into this is the more love I put in, the more time I put in and nurturing I put in there, the process will develop and, and we will get through that season to get to the next season where this bonsai tree has been developed through love and it can only be sustained as well through love and where we can trust the spirit there for specifically what needs to happen. So I want to challenge you right now to grab a piece of paper, grab something or even in your mind where, or in your heart where you're sitting right now. Just see the places in your heart where you have taken love away where you have, have stripped love, love away from people, where you have stripped love away from yourself, saying you're not worthy to be loved, or that you even at this moment of time, not even, you don't know how to love anymore. And I want you to write that down, or I want you to start thinking about that. And specifically with this, I, I want to go into prayer specifically about how we will handle this place of love and what we will do going forward from here. So just for a moment, just close your eyes. And see these places where you don't feel worthy of love, where you feel that love doesn't, doesn't matter towards you, or where you find it difficult to love people. And God, as we are sitting here right now, I just want to open each and every person's heart. I'm asking you to open your heart to encourage this place of love, to really start seeing how the Spirit steps into your life with this thing, this fruit place called love, and how the Spirit really is stepping in and sorting these things out, stretching what needs to be stretched, opening what needs to be opened, and closing what needs to be closed. Father, as we are sitting here, we just acknowledge your Spirit in our lives. We acknowledge the fruit of love in our lives. We know it's never easy. We know that it always takes something from our side that we need to give up we need to give up our selflessness to be able to love someone that, is, that really needs that love. Someone that has really done something bad towards us or a situation that we can really just love in that place. Father, I pray for the hearts that have been bruised, hearts that have been hurt, Lord, in this place, that you will just step in and your Holy Spirit will just bring healing to those places. Where your Holy Spirit will just ignite love again. And that in this process, we will look further than what we see inside ourselves that we will look to the Spirit for that fruit, that we will trust the Spirit for that fruit. Father, I pray that you will guide us through this process, through these next few months, to really understand 
not just what the fruit of the Spirit is, but how it works in our lives, how it activates in our lives, and what we need to do with that, what, what is our role in that place. And to remember that it's not from us, but it's directly from the Spirit. It's the only way we can receive that. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you that you sent your Son for us, to die for us, for our sins, and so that we can stand here today and say, but we are able to love. It's not always easy. It's, it's most of the times difficult. But we are able to love because you loved us first. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your blessing over this day and this afternoon. And I pray, Father, that you will take this message further in each and every person's heart that is standing, sitting, or just listening to this outside. Amen. Right, so I want to encourage you to keep on listening to our um, new series of Fruits of the Spirit. And this is what it's about. It's about the end product. It's not that much about the fruit, having the fruit or bearing the fruit. It's about the end product and what we do with the end product and how this end product tastes to the next person, to the community, to the people that we give it out to. That is what we are working for and that is what we are praying for in this series and we are walking with you. We don't have all the answers. We are walking with you in this, in this series, walking with you in, in this love place that we are standing in today. And if, if it's difficult to love, if you've just realized where you need to give out a lot more love today, someone that you need to phone, someone that you need to make right with, call them right now. Stop whatever you're doing. Call them. Go and visit them. Drink a coffee. Just get out there and just start sharing this love. And if you don't know how to do it, just trust God, trust the Holy Spirit, and trust that fruit that is already inside of you that you just need to start nurturing. That is all from my side. See you again next time.